July treated the single family, condo, and multifamily market well with one market that was way up. Is this the good time before the storm? If you're looking to hear about the Massachusetts real estate market data for the month of July for single family homes, condos, and multifamily properties, then you are in the right place. It's important to know this information. If you're in the market to buy or sell a home, going to be in the real estate market in the future, or just want to know what is going on with what is most likely your largest investment. Let's get down to business. But first, hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then know I'm here to help. Let's start with single families. In July of 2023, we saw 3,603 single family homes sell for an average sales price of $808,000. All right, we're going to start with the sales comparison. In regards to sales, it was pretty much more of the same. The July number of sales decreased by an amount of 21% from last year's 4,561 units sold in July of 2022. And for the first seven months, the average decrease in sales has been a decrease of 22.7%. I've said on more occasions than I can count that the difference in the number of sales should start to tighten up. I'd have actually thought it would have started in some of the July data. Now, I want to see what the sales data for August and September has before I start pulling back on this prediction because it's just going to happen at some point. Let's talk about prices because that's what really matters and what most people care about. If you're in the market is going to tank camp with housing prices crashing, then July, well, that's not going to be a good month for you. In July 2023, home prices went up by 5.1% year over year. This was actually the highest year over year appreciation rate that we've seen in 2023. And with this 5.1% monthly year over year increase, then that means the home prices are now up 3.2% for the first seven months of 2023. This is some exciting news for the Massachusetts homeowners. Now, the real estate market continues to take some of the best punches that the economy can throw at it. And coming out, well, looking pretty darn awesome. July is just more of the same for 2023 stories. Now, sales are down and prices are up, but let's dive into the numbers just a little bit deeper and see if we can get a better understanding of them. So 3,603 single family homes sold. Again, it's not the prettiest number in the world, but it is the exact amount of sales that happened in July of 2011. And that's a first. But again, it's more of the same with this year's sales levels being the equivalent to 2011. Now, this now makes for 25 consecutive months of year over year sales declines. Talk about an ugly charter. But this kind of shows why that sales levels decreasing doesn't really matter because sales levels were going down starting in 2021, as well as in 2022, and home prices went up a lot. As we've talked about before, the decrease in sales levels is not a number to be scared of, as long as sales and inventory levels work in tandem. Then home prices are going to be just fine. Which brings us to the single family inventory levels. Just another month of an inventory graph that looks just the same as well all the other graphs. It's another month of record low inventory. It's another month where I have to say that inventory levels have never been this low in July, ever. And a little more of the same is that with sales levels being at 2011 levels, then this means that inventory levels are seven times below the amount of inventory that was on the market in July of 2011. At that time, we had 25,181 single family homes on the market. Talking about amazing time to be a buyer. Provided this inventory imbalance continues, that home prices will continue to go up at sustainable levels. The 3% increase in home prices is a sustainable marketplace that's good for both buyers as well as sellers. And when it comes to inventory, the trend, well, it continues. The inventory gap between levels this year compared to 2022 and 2021, while well, it continues to widen. And it's starting to be by a considerable amount. In the beginning of August, there were 1,855 fewer homes on the market compared to inventory levels at the same time in 2022. That's a 34% decrease in just one year. It's a 20.6% decrease when compared to the levels in 2021, which was previously the all-time inventory low. Our inventory peak is 4,012 units, which was hit for just one week this year. Inventories pulled back from this high with there being about 3,600 homes on the market in the beginning of August. It's going to be interesting to see if inventory levels cross that 4,000 mark again. It's not looking like it's going to be a favorable market for buyers on the inventory side come this fall. So buyer beware. 
So sales were off by 21%, while inventory levels were down by nearly 33% compared to last year, and off by 20% from previous record lows in 2021. Demand, it continues to outstrip supply. But as we've talked about before, supply is being limited for the exact same reason as demand, interest rates. These market dynamics are not changing anytime soon. Housing prices are going to go down anytime soon. People are constantly fixated with the demand side of the curve. Yes, sales are down to 2011 levels, but that is only half the story. If you ever hear anyone talking about the health of the market and they are only talking about sales levels without even mentioning inventory levels, then go invest your very valuable time somewhere else because they have absolutely no idea what they're talking about or just trying to push some special narrative. As long as inventory levels stay this low, then there will be no housing price corrections. But be on the lookout for pockets where you might just see inventory go up a lot and very fast. This could be the story that we see on the Cape. I actually did a video on the Cape Cod rental crash, which could resolve a surge of inventory as well as some falling prices. If the Cape interests you, then you should definitely take a look at that video. It's pretty interesting. How about that pricing trend that we've talked so much about? What did the month of July have to say about that? Well, look at that. Another month of sales data following the trend that we see year in and year out. I asked last month if anyone wanted to take any bets where we were headed. Should we take some bets about next month now again? Because the average sales price for a single family home, it's going to go down for the rest of the year that is. In a couple months, get ready to hear all the fanatics out there screaming from the rooftops about how prices are down from their peak. But you're smart enough to not listen to those jokers that call themselves experts because you know that the pullback in pricing is all part of a yearly trend. It happens every year. So onto the condo market and then the multifamily market. But first, if you like hearing about the Massachusetts real estate market, then please consider subscribing. And if you could do me a huge favor, can you please hit that like button right down there? It helps with the YouTube algorithm, which then pushes the video out to more people. And it just makes a huge difference for me and my channel. Now, for the month of July, we saw 1,607 condos close in Massachusetts for an average sales price of $777,000. This was a big number, a big, big number. But we're going to get to that in just a moment. Now, the sales for the condo market continue to follow the trend lines that we are used to seeing. Sales this month dipped from their seasonal high in June. In July, we saw a huge plunge in sales, but the year-over-year -year decrease in sales has just been getting better as we've gone on. In April, sales levels were off by 32% compared to April of 2022. In May, they were down 21%, while in June, they were down 18%. Now in July, they're down by 15% when compared to July of 2022. When we look at the comparison for July sales data in the condo world for the last dozen or so years, the 1,607 units, it wasn't terrible. It handily beats out July 2011, but falls a little short of the sales levels in 2012 when 1,773 units sold. I'm not disappointed with these sales levels. I also think the condo market could be less impacted by that handcuffing of people being locked into a lower rate. If you're those newlyweds living in a two or one bedroom Boston condo with your first kid on the way, well then that condo, it's gonna get small very quickly. Maybe you can hold out for a little longer, but most likely the suburbs, they're gonna start screaming your name at some point. And here is more of the same. Inventory is a record low for the condo market as well. Inventory is currently 22.5% below the levels of available condos in July of 2022. While our sales levels are between 2011 and 2012 levels, inventory is currently four times lower than the inventory levels during that time. So sales were down 50% while inventory was down 22.5%. In other words, the market got worse for buyers. Remember last month's analysis when we talked about how the condo market year-over-year -year pricing was down by 0.42%? Well, July's numbers made up for that. This month was a whopper of a month. The average sales price of nearly $778,000 represents a 20.8% year-over-year increase in the average sales price. You heard that right, 20.8%. Last month, I said that I wasn't ready to throw up a caution flag, and this month makes me feel pretty darn good about not throwing up that caution flag because year-to-date prices for the condo market have increased in the state of Massachusetts by 5.4%. The appreciation rate for Massachusetts was 2.5% for the first six months. So in just one month, when we added in July's data, the average appreciation rate in Massachusetts for condos has more than doubled. July, it was a great month for condos. 
Now, the single family market follows a trend just beautifully. The condo market basically pokes a stick in the trend's eye. This is the second month in a row that the condo market has given this single finger salute to the historical trend. What's going on here? Check this graph out. We're gonna start with looking at the last three years. When you see it this way, it's just crazy that July meant for the condo market. But let's take a look at a longer analysis and see if prices going up in July has ever happened. When looking at the graph, it's hard to see, but prices have actually gone up twice since 2017 for the month of July. They went up in 2018 as well as 2020. Now, the amounts were much less, a measly $262 in 2018, but a much more respectable $21,573 in 2020. So it's happened before, but it's rare. And it's never happened at this extreme before. Next month's going to be interesting. And have to imagine that home prices are going to go down next month. So the question becomes by how much? And now for my very quick shameless plug, if you're thinking about buying or selling a home, then reach out to me as I would be honored to help you through the process. Now onto the multifamily market. Last month, it was the multifamily market that razzled and dazzled. As we talked about, the condo market, well, took that glory. But the multifamily market stepped up with a very respectable month. In July 2023, we saw 425 multifamily houses sell for an average sales price of $790,000. The 425 units sold is 29.9% below the activity that we saw in July 2022. That is a marginal step back from last month's 28.2% year-over-year decrease, but it's possibly showing that some leveling out of the multifamily market's happening. The 425 units is nearly equivalent to the sales levels that we saw in July of 2011, with 449 multifamily properties sold. We won't call two months of data as the normalized market, but if next month's that way, then I think we might be on to something. Let's take a deeper look at the inventory levels first, then we'll jump into prices. We currently have 673 multifamily properties on the market in the whole entire state of Massachusetts. This 673 units is up from last month when we had 612 properties on the market. This makes the inventory levels in July of this year an all-time low year over year. While sales levels are at the 2011 levels, the inventory is 4.4 times below the inventory levels that we saw back in July 2011. Meanwhile, inventory levels were down by nearly 46% when compared to July of 2022. I'm looking at the data and the trend. I kind of feel like the sales levels and prices of June stole a little bit of the thunder from July. June was such a good month and such a big outlier that it just makes me think that this is why July was a little off. In other words, I'm not worried about this month's data, but check this out. For the month of July, the year-over-year -year sales data shows that prices jumped by 3.7%. As we talked about last month, the June data was so good that it took prices for the year down by 2.4% in the first five months to up 0.3% in the first six months. Out of the July data and the average sales price for multifamily properties is now up by 0.89%. Looks like the multifamily market built on the gains from last month. The next five months are going to be interesting, to say the least. Let's talk about your own personal real estate needs. All of my information is in the description below. I always love to talk about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next nine or 90 days, then I'd love to chat with you. Just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you're thinking about possibly selling, then we can actually help you traditionally, or we actually offer a cash offer program on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation is, we can help you get it done. You can also visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com and just fill in your information and then we're going to reach out to you. Questions or comments about any or all of this market data? Then drop me a line in the comments section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to respond to you. Until next time.